All praises to the Most High Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Most High Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to my Hebrew brothers and sisters. It is once again, we are back on live. I wanted to leave this scripture with us for tonight. Prayer is the power. Prayer is the power. Prayer is the power because the Most High has ordained for His people to pray without ceasing. So I wanted to read from Second Chronicles, and I want to start in the seventh chapter, and I want to begin in the fourteenth verse. Shalom to my Hebrew brothers and sisters. We're talking about prayer is the power. I tell you, if we can ever get a revelation of the, of the understanding of how powerful prayer is, we will never neglect it. We will never act like we don't have time for it. We will never feel like, you know, we already prayed enough. Prayer is the power. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, my people, he's talking about his people, his people. Hebrew Israelites, his people that he called, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Let's start right there. We got to break this scripture down because it take humility. It take a humble spirit to be in a posture in the spirit of prayer because the flesh do not want you to pray. The flesh don't want you to be humble to pray. But see, prayer is powerful. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, he said, seek the Lord, pray, talk to him while you're there, seek his face through his word. He said, and turn from their wicked ways. See, that is the part that people don't want to um, feel that they have wicked ways. Well, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We got to turn from our wicked ways. That's why a lot of things don't go right for people because they don't want this prayer. They don't want this prayer. They don't want prayer to be a part of their daily lives. Prayer have to be a part of your life every single day. It's our anchor. If they would turn from their wicked ways, then he say, then here's a conjunction. Then there's a conjunction before the blessing. There's a conjunction, you know, before the most high answering your prayers. If we do all of what he says and humbling ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, things that we know that he don't like, things that displeases him. He say, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven. That means he's going to open up the windows of heaven to hear you. He say, and I will forgive. He say, and will forgive their sins. That's first. Forgiving our sins is first because we, we know that the most high don't hear sinners prayers. And people have a hard time believing that. But the scripture says that the most high does not hear sinners prayers. We don't want to be considered a sinner in the presence of the Lord. We don't want him to shut up our prayers because we are a sinner perpetuating, continuing in sin. So he says, again, let's read that second part. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. And will heal their land. Our land need healing as a whole. Hebrew Israelite. Our land need healing as a whole. We got to do it like this scripture says. Humble ourselves before his mighty hand. Humble ourselves and pray. If you, if we can really realize how powerful prayer is. That's why we have intercessors. Intercessor has gone in. Once you know that that's the power, once you know that that's the spirit 
that's going to keep you connected to the Most High, that's going to protect you on this earth. Prayer is going to open the doors. Prayer is going to allow you to be healed. Prayer is going to allow your situations to work out for your good because the Most High know that you one of his chosen people. You're his people. He say, my people. He hears his people. And that is the way that we have favor with him when we humble ourselves and pray before the Most High. And we can do that throughout the day. Of course, we're still commemorating the Day of Atonement. And that is the one of the uh, convocations that helps us afflict our souls. See, the flesh don't want to pray. So you have to be intentional about uh, afflicting your souls before the presence of the Lord. Let's read verse 15. It says, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. That's wherever place you're at, that you are, that you are praying, that you are giving yourself to the most high prayer. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Men ought to always pray and not faint. So many times, you know, the enemy goal is to get you distracted. The enemy's goal is to let you feel like uh, you already prayed enough prayer, enough prayers. And prayer is not that important. Yeah, because a lot of us, we're in the Word. We're always in the Word. But see, the distraction is where the enemy can get you not to uh, humble your souls before the Lord in prayer. More than what we think we do. More than what we think we do. Because prayer is releasing the angels. The Most High is dispatching angels on our behalf when we pray to keep us from accidents to keep us protected. Prayer is doing so much behind the scenes that we will never know. We will never know uh, how powerful prayer is. We're going to read another scripture about pray. Prayers. Prayers. Now we know James 5.16. That's talking about confessing our faults, confessing our sins, And he said that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual, 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 being very effective, fervent, like you just stayed in there with the Most High. You just close your, you know, whether you open your eyes, close your eyes, but you just really in with the Most High in your prayer. You don't want to be moved out of your prayer life. You don't want to slack up on your prayer life. And this message could just be reminding um, our nation to get back into the posture of prayer. Don't neglect your prayer life. Don't let life overtake you where you're, you're just really stressed out now. You don't even feel like praying. Don't let the enemy trick you to do that. First Peter chapter four. Let's look at verse seven. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be you sober and watch and pray. Because the Most High gives us directions, understanding. He orders our steps when we have a prayer life before him. That is the only way we can we can hear him. That prayer has gone up. That's why in Revelation, um, let's go to um, chapter 8 and verse 3. The saints' prayers are bottled up. All of your prayers, all of the tears, it's being, the Most High is remembering our prayers because he knows that we are praying to the true God, the one and only true God. Okay, it says here in Revelations chapter 8, verse 3, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. The prayers of the saints was bottled up upon the golden altar. The prayers of the saints from years ago, our ancestors' prayers, the Most High is remembering our prayers. The Most High is seeing our humbleness to getting prayer, to stay in prayer, to always pray. Men ought to always pray, he says 
and not faint. It's a perpetual, continual act of reverence to the Most High to show him what? Oh, Father, we need you. We we need you, Lord, that we are not out here trying to handle life and do life on our own. We need you. That's what prayer does. Prayer helps us to rely on the Most High and not ourselves. That's what prayer does. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Verse 6, all praise to the Most High, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, for our, our Hebrew brothers and sisters. Philippians chapter 4, and let's look at verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, everything. He didn't say some things, everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request be known. Unto Yahweh. Prayer in everything. He didn't say some things. He said everything. You got to pray about it. You got to put it before the Lord. You got to seek him. And that's how many of our ancestors won the battle. Won many battles when Jehoshaphat prayed. He said, oh Lord, we know not what to do with this great army that has come against us. He said, but they prayed. All, the, all of Israel prayed. They made their prayer and petition unto the Most High. And when the Most High is with you, you have already prayed. The battle is already won. It doesn't matter how it turn out. It doesn't matter who's coming up against you. When you put those prayers out there, the enemies, the principalities, rulers of darkness, wickedness in high places, they recognize the spirit of your prayers and your power that you have with the Most High because of those prayers. We never want to be a people that neglect prayer. We, we never want to be those people. The Bible tells us continue in prayer. Continually in prayer. Let's go to Acts chapter 6, verse 4. All praises. We're talking about the power of prayer. We got to stir up the gift that is in us to pray. We, we want to be able not to have a form of godliness and deny the power. Many of us have the gift of intercession. And that comes from spending a lot of time in prayer because we know, we know the powers of the enemy that is out here. When you neglect prayer, you, it's a very, it's a very uh, ignorant thing for people, our people, to neglect prayer. Our ancestors prayed. They know the powers of the enemy. They know the power of the Most High that is above the enemy to shoot down principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places. They know that the Most High is the only one that can conquer those evil spirits through the power of prayer. And that is important to pray the word, pray the word. You know, we live under an open heaven, as I say often. We live under an open heaven and we want to always, yes, we, we want to always make our prayers and petition unto the most high. Don't never go out without having a prayer. Don't never trust this life without prayer because that's our anchor. So Acts chapter six, verse four says, but we will, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, continually give ourselves to prayer. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, that's why James 5, 16 said the effectual fervent prayer, because prayer, yeah, prayer will wear you out. And it's a good thing because that's how you become effectual. That's how you become fervent. And that's how the Most High answers you because he knows that prayer is always on your mind. The spirit of prayer is always on your mind. And we don't want to pray amiss. That's why the scripture says, and you know, I'm not going to go to every scripture that I want to point out. But you you, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you know, meaning when you pray, you ask amiss. We can't just pray for ourselves. We want to be able to pray for our nation. You want to be able to pray for others. You want to be able to uh, let the Most High see that you have the compassion in your heart that you are praying for your nation as well. As James 5.16 says, pray for one, pray one for another. Pray one for another. So let's look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We're talking about 
the power of prayer. The power. Prayer is the power. Prayer is the power. Let's go. I think I want to go. I said to. Let's see. Let's make sure we want to get. Yeah. First Corinthians 14, 15. First Corinthians 14, 15. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. We're talking about the power of prayer. Prayer is the power. So it says here, what then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with understanding. Also, I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with, with the understanding also. We have to pray with the spirit. Wait on the Lord. Pray with the spirit and understand. The Most High will give you directions. You will feel it in your spirit. You will have a calm spirit. A lot of people are suffering with anxiety. A lot of people suffer with, uh, you know, uh, disorders that, you know, inflict their nervous system because a lot of people have fear. In order for you we to get rid of all of these uh, elements of fear, anxiety, we have to humble ourselves in prayer. Because when you pray, that means you're fully and wholly trusting the Most High. You're fully and wholly giving yourself, giving your whole life to the Most High. And that comfort of peace and joy, that can only come from the Most High. So in order for us to get there, get that spirit and get there, we have to constantly and continually be in prayer. It's not a form of godliness. It's not trying to be over-righteous or trying to be, you know, so super spiritual. No, this is a necessity. Prayer is a necessity in our lives. We have to understand the severity that prayer is a necessity. First Thessalonians 517. That's how we're going to understand that prayer is a necessity. It's not something that, you know, we want to feel like tell people, oh, I just got out of three hour prayer. No, prayer is a necessity anyway. That's why he said when you pray, you can go in your closet and uh, the father that see if you in secret, what? He shall reward you openly because prayer is that much powerful. So we says first Thessalonians 517. And it says here, pray without ceasing. Yeah. You will feel the power within yourself when you develop a prayer life constantly and pray without ceasing. Coupled with the word, coupled with your charity, your charity of doing good towards people. Prayer breaks the, the will of your own flesh. Prayer breaks the will. That's why he said my people will humble themselves because your flesh, I, this flesh does not want to pray. This flesh does not want to worship. This flesh don't want to study the word. Flesh is enmity against the most high. It doesn't want to do anything that the spirit of the Lord have said in his word. You can't trust your flesh. You got to, uh, you know, restrict, afflict the flesh. That's what this, the, the day of atonement is really all about as well. Afflicting our souls and repenting, fasting, getting back to that spiritual state where we feel stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And we become warriors in the spirit because the most high can hear your prayer on whatever level you pray when you sincere. And we have to make petitions unto him, many petitions Again, not just for ourselves, but for others. Yeah, but pray without ceasing. Pray always. Ephesians 6 and 18. Ephesians 6 and 18. Let's just want to leave this word before I turn in tonight because a lot of people may go to bed. You're distressed. You got issues going on. Uh, you know, you're fighting. You're battling some things. You're battling some things. You can overcome whatever you're battling. Um, and people might say, well, I already prayed. I already prayed. You know, well, just the anxiety and the stress in, in, the, in the, the tone of some people's voice or, you know, what they're going through lets you know that you haven't really surrendered. 
So you have to surrender to the most high. That's that humility to surrender it to him in prayer. Yeah, you're going to break down. You're going to break down in prayer. You're going to break down in prayer. And that is the only way you're going to be able to surrender your will for his will. Like the most high got this. You lay it on the altar. So many times we try to fix it ourselves. But the burden is lifted when you surrender your will for his will. So that's why here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says, <clears throat> Salakia, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. In the spirit. How do you pray in the spirit? That's a that's a for a big debate among our Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters, because many, of course, feel like tongue tongues is eliminated. But how in the spirit you pray in the spirit with the language that the Most High has given you to pray in the spirit, uh, that heavenly language and supplications in the spirit. That supplication, that supplication is a brokenness. That supplication is a brokenness. That is how we reach and touch the throne of the Most High with that supplication. So we got to be broken. The Bible says a broken and a contrite heart, spirit, he won't despise. That's why he said, pour out your heart, O ye people. Pour out your heart to the Most High, Yahweh. You got to pour out your heart. Your relationship is personal with the Most High. We have a personal relationship with Him. Don't nobody know how we pray in our personal prayer time. That's why He say, if you pray to Him in secret, He would do what? Reward you openly. Openly. Because He know that you make time, whether it's impromptu or whether you schedule a time that you're going to get in prayer. Because prayer has to be first in our lives. It, because that's our connection to the Most High. That's that we are putting Him first, above all else, above your family, above your job, above your personal, you know, activities, your hobbies, or whatever. We want to be you. You feel that sense of peace when you put the Most High first. And someone may be on this journey for the first time and and walking with the Most High. They don't really understand the, the, the power of prayer that it has. So to those that are on this new journey anew, it's, you have to be able to make sure your mind is wanting to put the most high first. And how do you do that? You do that by prayer because that's how you commune with him. That's how we communicate with him. You talk to the most high every morning and all throughout the day. You want to be able to make him a part of your life all day and every day. Doesn't make you super spiritual. You still take care of your business. You still got to go to work. You still got to, you know, uh, take care of your family. But you do that by trusting in the most high and putting him first to pray. Scriptures talk about people that did not pray. One of the kings in Israel was cut down because he didn't pray. A lot of them missed opportunities, lost a little, some battles because they didn't pray. And there's a time for everything. There's a time for everything. The Most High, after you prayed, He wants you to go ahead on and handle business. Handle business, as I think it was when they were losing the battle at AI. And I think it was Joshua that was down there praying because they had lost, was losing the battle. And the Most High said, get up. Get up. Sin is in the camp. So you got to deal with whatever is at hand after you pray. It says watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Again, yes. Watching for the saints, praying for the saints, praying for your enemies in our nation. People that may have offended you. People that may have done something wrong. You know, we, we don't worry about the enemies outside our nation because the Most High is going to handle them anyway. But our brethren, you know, we, 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 we lay up those prayers for our brethren. As the scripture says, you know, we ought to, um, you know, encourage those that are weak. 
Strengthen those that are weak. You pray for them. The prayers will go forth. Prayer is like the spirit of that's in the wind. The wind it carries it. Prayer is like it's like whatever you say out of your mouth. As the Bible says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So whatever you speak, whatever you pray, you know, it's going to the throne. It's not dropping to the ground, especially if it's done effectually and fervently. Your prayers are not in vain. Your labor of love is not in vain. Nothing gets goes in vain with the Most High, especially when you pray with the brethren or the sisters. You come together to pray. He said, that's why he said, with, you know, two or three are gathering, gathering in my name. There am I in the midst. We come together in prayer together, whether it's your brother or sisters, whether it's via fellowship in the congregation or the phone, however you do it. When you come together in prayer, let's talk about the hours of prayer, the timing of prayer. A good time, you know, when I used to way back in the day travel a good little piece every morning, 5.30 in the morning to have prayer in a certain location. I don't know. It's just something about that early morning prayer where the dew is just fresh. And the most high is there to get our day started when you start your day in the morning with that type of supplication and prayer. Because we have an adversary, the most high said, we have an adversary And the only way we can win the battle against the adversary is to pray. Again, we can look in a lot of the Psalms, Psalms 39 and 12. David prayed so many prayers unto the Most High. That's why he was a man after God's own heart. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer, Psalms 39 and 12. Let's go there. won't be before you long. I'm just grateful that the Most High has given us life and given us this understanding of how we can get into his presence. David said, hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. He said in verse 13, Oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. So it's always that prayer before the Most High to be very sincere, to tell the Most High what is going on in your life, to tell the Most High what you're feeling. Someone said, when I pray, I get attacked more. Exactly. But see, you don't let up. That's what the enemy want us to do because, you know, when we pray, yeah, Satan is fighting us to not not pray. So he's going to send attacks. He's going to send whatever he can to get you to not to be in the presence of the Lord, to get you to lose faith in the power of your prayers with the Most High. Oh, yeah. That's how intercessors become intercessors. You don't give in. Intercessors is is a powerful uh, prayer life. Intercession is a powerful prayer life because the more the enemy attack, the more you know you got to go in even more. Because you know that you are a warrior for the Most High. He's made us warriors to pray, putting on the whole armor of God, of the Most High, and praying fervently, never giving up. We have to pray before the Lord, stay before his presence. And so even that's why he said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We are Jerusalem. We're Jerusalem. We're Jerusalem. Pray for Jerusalem. He loves Jerusalem. Yes, there's a geographical location of Jerusalem. That's not what I'm saying, but we, his people are Jerusalem. And he said, pray for Jerusalem. That's praying for one another. That's why when Solomon built the temple, if you want to get an understanding of that in Second Chronicles, uh, of course, chapter 7, you read the whole chapter. When, when Solomon built the temple, I mean, they said a powerful prayer. That when, the, when they pray in this place and you hear us, 
Hear us when we pray in this place. Forgive us when we pray in this place. That's why you just tuning in. The, the scripture that we read in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, if, if my people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, seek his face, turn from their wicked way. Your whole life change, changes uh, the more you pray. Your whole life changes. Yes. And like someone said, of course, the more they pray, the more they feel like they get attacked. Because that should let you know the power that you have in prayer when you are being more attacked. And the Most High is keeping you and covering you. Your life will be extremely blessed, immensely blessed. It doesn't matter all the bombs in the spiritual realm that's going on around you, all the attacks. You know you have that power with the Most High that one way or the other and one day, no matter what, He's going to see you through. You're going to see the victory. You already have the victory, period. But you will see the glory of the manifestation of the Most High because of your dedication to Him, because you are a person uh, that pray without ceasing. You are a person that look unto Him, the author and the finisher of your faith. And that's the only way you can commune with Him, you can talk to Him, is through prayer. Anytime you talk with the Most High, you are praying, making those supplications to Him. Watch and pray for all of the saints. Your prayer has to be pure. As Job said, his prayers was pure before the Most High. We want the Lord to receive our prayers. Let's look at that real quickly here. We may got one or two more verses and then we're going to close out. Let's go to Psalms chapter 6 verse 9. Psalms chapter 6 verse 9. We talk about the power that prayer has. Prayer is the power. Prayer is the power. We could do a whole lot of talking. We could do a whole lot of teaching. But prayer is the power. Prayer is the power. So we want to go to Psalms chapter 6 verse 9. It says, the Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let's go to verse 10. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. That's what they, the Most High does to your enemy. When he knows that you belong to him because you're always in his presence. You have that connection. Our, our forefathers and foremothers, they had that connection with the Most High. How do you think many of our forefathers and foremothers made it? How do you think they overcame the bondage and oppression in this nation? How do you think that they overcame, that they didn't die out there, but they gave birth to our forefathers, foremothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and grandmothers, and mothers, and so forth, to we here. We here. They survived. Could it be because they had the anchor of hope of prayer in their life? I know as a child, growing up, probably was about seven and my mother gathering my sisters and brothers we all were in the living room on many occasions but this particular one of course maybe this is the one I remember she was fervently praying and crying with tears and as a child it, it, it caught my attention and I was intrigued and I was just looking at her and I kept I couldn't stop looking at her I didn't understand then why she was saying these words and down there crying on her knees while we was just around her on the floor. But see, prayer is contagious because it stuck with me. Then as I began to grow up as a teenager, I would get on my knees and cry and pray just like she did. Not really having a fully understanding of the power of prayer or what I was doing, but I know it was getting in my spirit. It was in my spirit. It never left me to this day. And the more I started understanding through this word, the, the power of the scriptures, how powerful prayer is and why the most I want us to pray and that we ought to pray with understanding. 
because our ancestors, the Most High has given our ancestors this power to pray. When Yahweh was in the Garden of Gethsemane, his spirit was heavy. He was under attack to be betrayed by our own people. He went and prayed, and the Bible says when he prayed, it was as great drops of blood. That is, he was in fervent in spirit praying. Of course, he asked the Father to let this cup pass from me. If it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Because see, some things you got to go through. Some things we got to go through. What prayer does is ease the pain of whatever we got to go through. Prayer give us the confidence. Prayer gives us the trust. Prayer takes away the fear because what? Perfect love casts out fear. And that in the scripture that says not for the long prayer, you know, we want to be a hypocrite and make long prayers because we want people to feel that, oh, we are so holy in public. That's why I don't really pray in public anymore. It's a private, personal thing among our people. So, you know, we don't want to be pious like the Sadducees and Pharisees to have an agenda. Because they make long prayers to make others around them feel or see that they are righteous of some sort. We know that when Paul and Silas was in jail, they prayed at midnight and the jail shook and the Most High opened the, opened the jail's doors. That's how powerful prayer is. It moves in the spirit. Prayer moves obstacles that we can't see in the natural you you have a situation and then it looked like it didn't turn out in your favor but that's what prayer does behind the scenes it fixes it for you that's why we hear the scriptures in Luke 18 and 1 that says men ought to always pray and not faint so you can get caught up out there when you trying to handle life on your own. But the simplest thing that the Most High want us to do is simplest to him, but it looked like it's hard for us. But all he requires, we just read in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, humble ourselves. You don't have to worry about your enemies. You don't have to worry about nothing. Just humble yourself. Give it over to the Most High. Sometimes we feel like our world is going to fall apart if certain things don't go our way. But see, the Most High have a greater plan. You know, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's plan that will be established. So when we in prayer, just like Yahweh, of course, like we said, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wanted that cup from the crucifixion to pass from him. He didn't want to go through that. But really quickly, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but let thine will be done. Some things we don't want to experience, some things we don't want to go through. But there is purpose and great glory as we've seen our Lord, you know, has risen with glory and power. But he prayed. He was the, the son of God, Yahweh, but he prayed. No one is exempt in his life from praying from committing our souls unto the most high. Yeah. We should have a new outlook on life. You know, when you really get the understanding of prayer, it should really, I remember, you know, back in the day and having an intercessory prayer ministry after I realized how important prayer was, there was a smile on my face. There was joy in my heart because I knew that if I continue to keep the prayer life that I have, Nothing will be able to conquer me. Nothing will be able to conquer me in this life. I don't care what come, what go. Nothing is more important than my relationship with the Most High. So that means I believe the word of who he say he is. And I am before his presence. That means nothing will be able to conquer you in life. 
It doesn't matter what come, what goes, what is said, what's not said, nothing and no one will be able to conquer you in life if you keep your prayer life fervent in spirit with the Lord because you are before the Lord and whatever happens to us, guess what? It's according to his perfect will because nothing can happen to us outside of the perfect will of the most high. So we accept whatever he allows. Once we have already given it over to him, we accept what he allows. So just wanted to leave that message with everyone tonight because it was stirring in me from earlier today and um, had a, a good, you know, time in the spirit of prayer with the saints and it just rolled over that I needed to share this power of the spirit of prayer that it has. If you can just realize, if you can just settle yourself, if you can just humble yourself, you have more peace. You have more peace in your life when you humble yourself and pray more, pray without ceasing. Yes. Stay before the presence of the Lord. Build up on the time of your prayer. It may be a few minutes at the beginning and you can, you know, begin to um, increase your time with the Most High. When you realize that he is more important than anything in anybody in any situation. Handle your business, but make him first. Make him first in your life. Make him first in your prayer life. And you'll always have great victory. You have small children, raise your children in prayer. Gather them around. Gather them around. You have little children, you know. It just was scary to me raising children and not have the presence of the Lord in my home with the Most High. Through prayer, praying and making petitions to Him. It's so important. And they were raised on that same spiritual power that you put in them that they will understand and know how powerful prayer is. See, a person that doesn't praise don't have any power. It may look like it. That's why you have a lot of evil spirits out here. By ancestors and our foremothers and forefathers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers, they survived and they had a spiritual life. Even, you know, the way we were raised or who we were raised around that had that power in their life. You saw the difference. You saw the difference. You felt the difference. They were humble. They didn't, you know, move fast in life like that. If you look at older people, they don't move fast. They don't move fast. They not, they don't have anything to worry about. They don't fear calamities. That's all around. There's no fear because what perfect love cast out fear. Perfect love that you know the most high love you. You love the most high. Perfect love cast out fear. You have a relationship with him. You have a relationship with him. Why fear? Why fear? You already understand your God. You have nothing to fear. The threatenings and everything that people do, you have nothing to fear. Because you have the most high power, the power of Yahweh with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you are a person that surrender your life unto the most high through prayer. Yeah, you may be holding on to the altar, the horns of the altar at times. Yes, yes. But at least you're there. At least you're there. And that's why we can still commemorate the Day of Atonement, because that is a time that we are before the mercy seat, the mercy seat to come boldly to the throne of Yahweh, that we can find grace and help and mercy in time of need, boldly to the throne of God. We have all of that mercy, grace, and everything that we need. It's like the Ark of the Covenant. The Most High Presence was there. Yeah, but only the high priest, according to the old, you know, the old covenant, was able to come in his presence. But now Yahweh has rent the veil in two. Well, now we have access. We can come before the Most High's presence anytime. 
There's no one that have to go before us. There's no mediator anymore. Christ is our mediator between us and the Father. So he takes our prayers to the throne. And that's where we live. And that's where we find our strength. And that's where we receive our joy. And that's where we receive our peace. So may the Most High bless you, keep you. Thank everyone for tuning in. And I'll be back. Shalom, shalom.